Hello everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be creating three cards using this new Slimline Pop-Up Lighthouse die set. Here I'm just showing you what you get in that set. It's another huge die and it also includes a mechanism to make the lighthouse pop up. I will be making two of my cards flat today and one will be a pop-up and all three of them are going to light up using Pear Blossom Press Easy Lights. I'm also going to pull in this new paper pad. It's six by eight and a half inches, so it's perfect for A7 cards and then slim lines. I'm also going to pull in the Beach Bird Silhouettes and the Beach Essentials die set. So the pattern paper, the lighthouse, and the Beach Bird Silhouettes are included in our Summer Deluxe card kit. So if you were able to get that kit, this is some great inspiration for you. I'm going to start by cutting the top window of the lighthouse. I'm just following the cut lines that are already drawn there to cut that out. And that is where I'm going to be placing my Pear Blossom Press Easy Light. Then I'll go ahead and just paper piece the rest of the lighthouse. You can see I cut the stripes from the red stripe pattern paper from the Let's Celebrate paper pad. The little metal grate I cut from gold mirror cardstock. And then the cap of the house I also cut from the same striped paper. The die also includes the bottom base piece, which I made gray. And then I opted to go with the oval windows that are included in the set. And I do apologize if you hear the rain. I live in Florida, so the weather is always unpredictable. Um, but yes. There are a couple different window options and I will use all of them in today's video. I really like these ovals. I made them just a shade darker than the paper that's beneath them. So for the white areas of the lighthouse, I chose a gray color. And for the red stripe, I went with a darker red color. I thought it would be cute to have a sentiment go behind the door. So here you can see I just placed the sentiment um, in the center towards the bottom and then I'm going to add my glue to the hinge of my oval door. There's also a rectangle door. You can cut the hinge off if you want that to lay flat, but I thought it would be a cute little surprise to have the sentiment in there. For the doorknob, I'm just taking a light brown pearl and placing that there. And then behind the opening of that cut out window, I'm going to add some vellum. This is going to soften the light behind it so that it's not a super bright bulb. All right, and then here I'm just kind of mapping out the scene that I want to create. Those grass pieces are from the Beach Essentials die set, and I am going to add some rocks, which are also included in the Slimline Pop-Up Lighthouse. I have my slimline card panel pre-cut. This is eight and three quarters by three and three quarters. So I'm going to be creating a four by nine slimline card today. I also have my beach bird silhouettes that I cut from white cardstock. I'm going to end up making those birds gray instead of white because I want to have white clouds up there and I didn't want too much white going on. I felt like my scene needed some waves in the background and some sand. So I'm going to create that by using the back, or I guess the bottom side of a waves slimline border. By flipping it upside down, you can get this wave texture. So I cut that from a white piece of scrap card stock and also from a darker shade of blue to create the waves in the background. The white is supposed to look like the white caps that you sometimes see on waves. And then I'm going to take a scrap of cream cardstock, which will be my sand. Now I am taking the Pear Blossom Press Single Light. Amanda sells the Easy Lights, which have wires, and you can get three different lights on one from one battery. And then she has single lights that are super easy. All you do is pop the little battery in and the button is already built into the single light. And that's all you have to do. Then you just have to tape it onto your card, add your push here button, and 
that's it. I love how easy her lights are. I will, for my last card, use her easy lights just to show that you can use those if you don't have the single light. Um, but personally, I really prefer the single lights, especially because they're a cooler uh, light and the easy lights are warm lights, which you may want one or the other depending on the project that you're making. And you'll see my last card, I actually wanted the warmer light. Anyway, you can see there that I added two more heavyweight white lighthouses behind the decorated one. That is to create some distance from the vellum to the light. It's not a huge amount of distance, but it's a little bit so that, again, that light bulb isn't so bright. It's a little bit muted down, both from the distance and the vellum. And now I'm just going to add some ink blending to my background panels. So for my sky, my waves, and my sand. For the sky, I'm using Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink. You can see that I'm blending about a third of the way up because I know that the waves and the sand will cover that part. And I'm going with a very light hand. I want this to be a clear blue sky, so I'm just letting that salty ocean be a little bit darker towards the bottom, and then I'm fading it into the light blue cardstock. For the blue wave, I am using Stormy Sky Distress Oxide ink. And again, letting that fade into the cardstock color. I love using colored cardstock when I'm ink blending. It just saves a lot of ink and time. For my grasses, I'm going to use some Vintage Photo Distress ink. And also for my rocks, now I end up flipping the rocks over because the grasses and the rocks almost look like the same color brown. So I wanted a bit of contrast, so you don't really have to add any ink to the rocks unless you're going, unless you want a darker color, I guess. I also used Vintage Photo for the sand. And now I have all of my pieces ready to assemble, so I'm going to add the blue wave in front of the white. I'm just having that white slightly peek through. It provides some separation between the sky and the water, but it also, like I said, looks like the white caps that you would see. Then I added my sand, and here I'm testing out my easy light. I added my lighthouse to the center, and then on either side, I'm going to add my grasses and then my rocks. So here you can see I flipped them over just so that they're two different shades of brown as opposed to the same shade. I think these grasses add some nice texture and interest to the card. All right, so I am going to trim off the overhanging grass. And I'm not gluing anything down yet because I know I will have to add foam tape behind this light. I did go ahead and glue my rocks to the base of my lighthouse. I'm also going to add some of my birds. And here's where I decide to adhere my light to the card panel. I'm using some strong half inch double sided tape to attach that battery down. It is a pretty heavy battery so you definitely want to use some strong adhesive here. You can see I lined up the light behind the opening of my lighthouse and then I hovered the lighthouse over the card panel so that I knew where to tape down the battery. Then I went ahead and glued the waves in the sand behind the lighthouse. And this created some dimension towards the bottom of the lighthouse, but it wasn't exactly even at the top. So when I go to add my foam tape, I'm adding a single layer of foam tape to the bottom part where the waves and the sand are, and then a double layer of foam tape where the top part of the lighthouse is. So it is a pretty dimensional card. This is one that I would either hand deliver or mail in a bubble mailer. Here's where I decide I want to go with gray birds so that they're not super distracting. I do really like the white birds. You can see I'm going back and forth on it. 
And those clouds are from the beach essentials die set, and so is the grass. As I mentioned, if you were able to snag one of those pop-up deluxe card kits, you can recreate all of these cards using that kit. I am going to pull in my most used Lawn Fawn stamp set. I think this is called Push Here. And I'm going to use these circles from our new Captain's Wheel die set to die cut some circles for my Push Me sentiment that I stamped from that Lawn Fawn stamp set. I white heat embossed it on craft card stock here. I'm sh uh, trying to figure out if I want the larger circle or the smaller one. I'll use the larger one on this card and the smaller circle on my last card. So I added that right over the button so that people know to push it so that the lighthouse lights up. And I just think that's such a fun and easy way to add an interactive element to a relatively simple die cut card. So for my second card, we're going to be making the pop-up and I'm going to pull in an older die. This is the slimline brick background and I die cut it from a light gray cardstock. And here I'm just popping out all those little bricks. You can glue those bricks on the lighthouse too. I think that would be a cute option, but I'm just going to use, I guess what would be the mortar of the bricks. And by the way, I was able to get a new Gemini, the Gemini 2, and that die cut machine is awesome. Usually I'd have to run this brick background two or three times to get a perfect cut with my old Gemini, but with the new one, it's one pass through and there's no issues with poking any of those bricks out. So I will do a full review on the die cut machine a little later. I'm still testing it out, but I will say that I made over 200 card kits with the new machine. And overall, I'm very pleased with it, but there are a few things I'd love to talk about. Anyway, so I am going to glue this brick pattern over one of my white lighthouses. So this is a nice alternative if you don't want to go with the stripes. This looks a little more elegant and adds some nice texture. I wanted to keep this lighthouse pretty much white, but I'm going to add some red pops of color at the bottom, also on the door and the windows, and the top part of the lighthouse. Again, I loved that secret message that you saw behind the door on the last card, so I'm going to do the same thing again here. By the way, those tiny sentiments are from the new Set Sail stamp set. Um, and also, I think the My Guiding Light stamp set, which is also included in the deluxe card kit. So you can hide some secret messages behind the doors using those. And again, I just glued the left hinge of the door so that it can swing open and closed. I'm going to add my red base pieces. And then again, I went with a gold crate or grate. I don't know what that's called. Fence thing. This time I went with the rectangle windows and also the rectangle door. So while this is our, a standalone die set, there are several layering pieces that can make different styled lighthouses. So they won't all look the same, which I do really appreciate because these dies are a bit more expensive, but I try to think of multiple ways to decorate lighthouses. And I included as much as I could fit onto the die set. So I went with three windows for this design and I even included those tiny little notches that go below the cap of the lighthouse and um, on the corners where the curve of the lighthouse is. So I die cut those from the same red cardstock. You can do that in a darker red to add some more dimension. As you can see, I already cut that opening for my light to go behind. And behind this, I'm going to add another solid white die cut, again, for that distance. 
and also for a little bit more sturdiness because that battery is a bit heavy. Again, I'm going to add vellum behind the opening of the window. Here I have my light, and because I don't have quite as much distance as I did on the first card, I thought what would also work is to add a double layer of vellum, and that definitely helped. So you can add as many layers of vellum as you want to kind of dilute the light a bit and I thought two was perfect for this design. So now we're going to create the side pieces so that we can make this into a pop-up. I went ahead and reinforced those score lines. I tucked in the two side tabs and then pinched the middle. So that's going to create an accordion. So you should have a mountain valley mountain. Here you can see I'm just reinforcing the other piece. These are the same pieces I cut twice from heavyweight white cardstock. I'm going to fold in those two side tabs, pinch the middle part, and then you should get this M shape, which will attach the front of your lighthouse to the back, and then you can push the lighthouse down, and that is how it will fold flat for mailing. So I'm going to add some liquid glue and attach it to the backlight house, which I just die cut from white cardstock. I am going to allow enough time for this glue to dry. I would suggest using double-sided tape. I ran out of my strong quarter inch tape. So I'm just giving it a few extra minutes to fully dry before I'm going to attach my front part of the lighthouse onto these two side pieces but i do have my mountains facing outwards and my valleys facing inwards it doesn't really matter but i think it just looks a bit cleaner this way and as you can see those side pieces are the perfect length to follow the angle of the lighthouse so here you can see i'm giving it a good push down to make sure it's fully dry before going and adding the glue to the top tabs and those will be glued to the back of my front piece of the lighthouse. I'm going to also go ahead and glue my battery right behind that large section of the lighthouse just below the opening for the light and that hides it very nicely. It's literally it takes 10 seconds to add that light feature to these cards and it really steps them up. So now I'm going to attach the right side to the side piece. Again, I'm just making sure that's nicely adhered before I'll glue the left side to my side piece. And that is it. So if you are new to pop-up card making, this is a great beginner set to get. It's a lot like our slimline pop-up birdhouse if you have that one. All right, so that finishes off the pop-up design. Again, I'm just making sure that's nicely attached and then I'll show you how it stands upright on a desk and how it lights up. The battery, you can see it from the inside, so if you wanted to take a strip of cardstock and make a little box or an envelope to hide that, you can, but these are just going with me to trade shows. I will be showing people at my booth how they light up, so I don't really bother to hide it, but I have shown that in previous videos. So you can see I added the push me button. I gold heat embossed it on white cardstock. I used the same little circle from the captain's wheel to cut that out. Any circle die would work here. I think a heart would also be cute. Then I have my bird silhouettes, which I cut from gold cardstock this time. And I just scattered those here and there on the card. I love that those silhouettes have some flying birds and some standing birds so i added the crane and the i guess sandpiper type birds to the bottom part of the lighthouse where the rocks are and then i added the flying birds towards the top i thought i would use that piece that i cut off the base where the opening of the light is 
I thought it would be fun to, again, follow the lines that are drawn into this opening to cut out these little lines, glue it back into place, and just have that bit of detail. You can still see the light shining through it, but it looks more like a lighthouse with those, I guess, notches cut inside the window. So I like both versions. It wasn't until I saw the piece laying on my desk, I was like, hmm, I wonder what that would look like. And I'm really happy with that. So I'm going to do the same thing for my final card. Again, here I'm cutting out that top window. I'll save that for later, then I'll cut the notches out of it so that you can see the stripes and see the light through those. I'm also going to do those, uh, cut that off for my layering pieces. This time I'm only going to glue one lighthouse or one white die cut behind my dark gray lighthouse. I'm going to save the other two so that I can use it almost like foam tape to uh, raise up my lighthouse for my light. So again, I chose the blue stripe pattern paper this time from the same Let's Celebrate pattern paper. The card kit, the deluxe card kit, also includes stencils that you can create your own stripes with, so I might do that um, in my 10 card one kit video, but that will give you a similar look without having to use pattern paper. Again, I went with a gold grate to go around the bottom part of the lighthouse window. And then I cut the detailed notches from a darker blue cardstock. And here you can see when you have a darker color, it almost looks like the entire die cut is rounded. So I really like how that looks. The uh, slimline pop-up lighthouse die set also includes some circle windows, which I'll use for this design. And I did not use the square windows, but that's another window option for you. I cut the window frames from black cardstock and the shadow circles from yellow. And I kind of wish I went with four windows here instead of three because they're pretty small but I still think it looks really cute. This time I'm not going to add a sentiment behind the door. I'm just gonna glue the door flat. You can see I cut off the hinge. And I'm going with a dark gray base this time because I want to create a night scene and I don't think the lighthouse would be stark white if it is a, I guess, set in a night scene. I'll go ahead and add my vellum behind the opening of the window. Now I'm taking that window that we cut off and I'm just going to cut away the notches or the stripes that are ingrained, I guess, inside the die and paper piece that back inside. It just adds a nice little detail. And this is actually the same layout as my first card. I'm really just making it a nighttime scene as opposed to a daytime. I will change the placement slightly, but I'm using the same wave uh, technique where I use a cloud border, flip it upside down to create a wave border instead. So if you don't have waves, it's very easy to hand cut the, I guess the scallop shape. And I actually don't have any waves, but I have clouds, so that was a nice little hack if you have cloud dies. For the sand, I used uh, Vintage Photo again. For the darker wave, I'm using, I think, Prized Ribbon and Black Soot. Here, instead of, with, instead of white caps, I went with a lighter blue color, but it ends up being too light, so I am going to color that in with my blue ink. So here are the inks I'm using for the sky. This is Prize Ribbon, then I'll go in with Villainous Potion, Picked Raspberry, and Mustard Seed. And this creates a gorgeous sunset background. I love how these colors blend. I have not really used Villainous Potion or Prize Ribbon. 
and I just love how this turned out. I am going in with a heavy hand here. I'm starting with yellow cardstock because I know my final color will be this mustard seed and that's going to mix with the picked raspberry to create a beautiful orange transition. And I was so happy with this. I didn't even really have to go over each color twice. I just went in with picked raspberry and I was happy with that. So here I'm laying out all my die cut pieces. Here I'm adding that light blue behind the dark blue wave. And again, I like that it create some separation but it's a bit too stark so I just took whatever ink was left on my blue blender brush and added that to the top of the light blue wave. I'll glue the dark blue wave right below that and this made it look like it was kind of like a stormy sea in the background which I like and blue lighthouses I believe are lighthouses that indicate rougher seas so each color uh, represents something different about the lighthouse or about the area so i thought that was really interesting i wanted to go with a more of a silhouette vibe with the grass and the rocks so i die cut those from black cardstock and here you can see i moved the lighthouse to the left side and i'm just going to use one grass instead of two I thought about using black birds, but I thought it would be fun to um, use the silver from the metal grate on the lighthouse and add that to the bottom with a silver crane. And then I will add black bird silhouettes to the top where the sunset is. I'm picking out a sentiment and I went with you're in my thoughts and prayers. I thought that this was a gorgeous, serene, peaceful scene that would work well for a sympathy design. And for the clouds, I'm going with a lighter gray. Again, I thought white would be too stark and it wouldn't match the darker theme. And I will have a 10 card one kit video for the new card kit and the deluxe kit. I believe the deluxe kit is completely sold. I think there is even the pre-ordered kits are sold out. So this will be a video for those that were able to grab one. If I do another pop-up kit in the future, I promise I will order more of them. I was not anticipating like I said in the last video, the amount of orders I received. I'm so happy that you guys love this collection. Anyway, so these are Amanda's Easy Lights. These are supposed to have three lights attached to it, but my cat got a hold of this particular set and completely chewed off the third light. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to let these go to waste. I might as well just use the two lights. And I still want them to go behind the opening of the lighthouse. So two lights is more than enough to illuminate that part of the card and what's nice with the easy lights is they are um, attached with wires so you can manipulate them to go in different areas of the card and you can still have your battery in a place where you really want it so in this case I want the push me button to be at the bottom of my lighthouse so I was able to do that with the easy lights so you might like one over the other. I really like having both. And with this particular scene, I thought a warmer light would look nicer because it is a sunset. So yeah, here are my two extra white die cut lighthouses. These are cut from 110 pound white cardstock. So there's quite a bit of dimension to these. And you can see I'm cutting out the areas where it overlaps the battery so that hopefully by the time this is all built up with dimension it will be the same level as that battery now i still ended up needing one layer of foam tape but this saved me um, from having to do two layers so i think if i would have cut two or three more white die cuts i would have been able to you know have the correct amount of dimension but i didn't have much time left so i'm just going to pull out my cheap foam tape this is from uline it's a little bit of a pain i honestly wouldn't buy it again but i have it so i'm going to use it i'm adding it to uh, the entire lighthouse and also to 
the sentiment that's overhanging. I did have to do two layers for the sentiment because I didn't add any cardstock layers behind it. And that will finish off my third card design once I can attach everything down. So let me know which card is your favorite. I do think this is my favorite one. I love how the sunset turned out. I added another push me button to the bottom left corner of the lighthouse. And here you can see those lights lit up super pretty. I will have Amanda's lights as well as the Scrappy Tails products that I use linked down below. I do want to mention before this video ends that we will have an Instagram inspiration hop using the new summer collection on Friday. So if you want to check that out, I will have my Instagram listed down below. You can give me a follow and that will notify you when that hop goes live. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.